so yeah, so uh, uh, this first presentation is about introducing the main features of the MUSE model, and which has been developed at the Sustainable Gas Institute of Imperial College in London. And uh, um, basically, it exists as an open source modeling framework, uh, so that is, there is a public version available and that can be downloaded uh, from uh, GitHub, uh, from the link I actually added here. Uh, it has been uh, taught at the Open University Summer School uh, in, in uh, June 2022, so it contributed uh, to the uh, capacity building uh, initiative uh, for uh, you know, so building capacity in the developing countries. Now we move more to the technical uh, side. Um, like, what is the uh, actual model workflow? Um, the uh, model is based on a simulation approach, and uh, uh, essentially uh, that, that, that means uh, that it, it aims still to build a market equilibrium of the energy system, which is uh, the one described in the graph on the, uh, on the left. Um, from, the, from the chart, you can see that uh, there's a um, uh, there are uh, all the sectors represented of the energy system, so from the primary supply of resources, so um, extraction of gas, coal, oil, renewables and nuclear, and uh, um, we then have all the, um, we then interact with a, uh, um, a, a clearing algorithm, which is just an interface across the different modules. Uh, it basically, uh, from the extraction of resources, we then uh, um, move to the conversion, where we are uh, modeling the, trans the transformation of resources into uh, uh, vectors, energy vectors, so electricity or uh, fuels or biofuels. And uh, this will make uh, available uh, the energy vectors to uh, demand. Uh, and uh, the demand typically contains industry, buildings, transport and agriculture. Uh, the uh, interaction with the uh, uh, climate uh, module is performed by uh, a carbon budget approach. Now, um, in terms of uh, um, description uh, of the, uh, let's say, the, the temporal approach, uh, we use a recursive dynamic approach to the solution. So this uh, means uh, that uh, we iteratively uh, run uh, like the, the, the iteration of the um, energy system uh, model, model solutions until we uh, reach convergence in, uh, in the demand. And the foresight, um, which means uh, uh, the um, uh, let's say number of years that uh, uh, each investor would have in front of uh, him or her uh, to know what the, what the future development of demand and technologies would be is uh, is limited. So this is a great difference. This is an important difference compared to other models where. Uh, there is an interim temporal approach, and uh, uh, which means essentially that at the beginning of the, uh, the simulation, there is a uh, there is knowledge over the full uh, number of years of the simulation of the yeah, of the simulation essentially, uh, and it could this creates uh, uh, this introduces basically uncertainty in the. Uh, uh, it, it helps us basically uh, modeling uncertainty of the uh, energy system uh, development. The granularity is uh, um, in terms of uh, uh, sub temporal sub yearly division um, is uh, modeled through time slices. So we have 32 time slices, and we have. Uh, um, emissions coverage that goes uh, that go uh, from uh, CO2 to uh, methane. Uh, now, uh, I will uh, spend some time uh, about uh, describing uh, uh, what we mean as a, an agent-based uh, modeling approach, uh, uh, essentially what uh, these, uh, what the investors basically uh, are aimed uh, to, to represent. Um, with an investor, we aim to represent uh, uh, stakeholders in each sector. 
and uh, they can be flexibly tailored to represent stakeholders of uh, each sector that we are representing uh, in the simulation. And essentially, we need to uh, describe uh, the share of the um, uh, of the population that they would represent. Uh, but in terms of key features, uh, they will have attribute which will uh, determine their maximum spending, so like budget, and attribute that uh, characterize uh, their this decision strategy. So maybe some agents can uh, follow only one uh, principle to uh, invest in new technologies or use more than one uh, purpose. And, but I will move to the to the goal and describe what the goal, what this goal means. Essentially, each uh, each agent will have uh, uh, objectives. So that means, for example, uh, investors that may want to optimize um, either their uh, profits or they may want to optimize the uh, comfort, for example, in buildings uh, uh, or. It, you know, different types of objectives, okay, objectives can also be modeled. And we can also handle multiple ones uh, where we can couple environment, couple environmental with uh, economic uh, objectives. So uh, these all, um, this list of attributes basically will then uh, uh, um, be built uh, with the uh, additional constraints that each agent would have in terms of decision, um, in terms of the set of technologies among which uh, they can select. Uh, that that is what we call search space. Essentially, um, uh, just to simplify, uh, certain. Um, uh, Say certain investor, like for for example, um, you know, uh, uh, citizens may want to uh, replace their old boiler, old boiler, with uh, um, choosing among all the different available options of heating system. Other may just want to stay stick to their gas boiler, other uh, may just want to choose, uh, uh, you know, depending on what they know, uh, what they feel more comfortable or what they see that other people are adopting. So let's say that more people are adopting like fuel cells, uh, fuel cells, um, uh, heat, sorry, heat pumps, uh, sorry, heat pumps, uh, they may want to just uh, buy them as well. Uh, and that's uh, uh, basically what I can say that should summarize the, uh, in, uh, broadly what an agent should be. Uh, so agents are they they will make autonomous decisions and they have this limited they they have uh, uh, bounded the knowledge. So they're limiting knowledge of the available technologies, but they can also influence each other somehow uh, with uh, uh, if certain decisions are becoming more and more uh, popular. Um, the uh, general model uh, solution approach um, um, it can be uh, described uh, um, considering the model uh, similar to this uh, as, an as an integrated assessment model. So it starts with uh, uh, the inclusion of service demand projection and they are based on uh, um, uh, SS, GDP and population and they normally refer to the shared socioeconomic pathways. So the the uh, chart on the left exemplify how we have modeled the uh, food demand uh, considering the uh, past crop uh, demand uh, and regressing it over the GDP per capita over um, a time series uh, um, over a time series of GDP per capita values. And uh, uh, yeah, so the, the the chart below is just a description of the, how the algorithm would work. So maybe it's not. I don't want to be like uh, I don't want to go maybe into uh, much detail if there is not a lot of time. But essentially, there is first uh, uh, a uh, the commissioning uh, a, a signal about how. Uh, many assets of which technologies are decommissioned in each sector. And then uh, uh, based on that value, knowing uh, 
the demand gap that needs to be filled. Uh, basically, each agent, uh, so this gives a, a signal uh, to each agent about where to invest uh, or the, about starting to invest, and then they would decide which technologies to, to choose among. And in terms of um, um, technology characterization, uh, the model is a typically uh, technology rich and uh, uses a bottom up approach to the description of the technology. So the table is uh, just an example of the breakdown of the chemical sector and includes like the same commodities that are used to model chemicals. Um, each of these technologies is characterized in terms of capital cost, fixed operating cost, variable operating costs, energy consumption, lifetime and emissions. And that is like typical of a bottom up approach as uh, you know, other models like uh, TM would have. So this is a bottom, typical bottom up approach to the technology characterization. Um, just a few more words about the regional uh, and sectoral coverage uh, uh, about the sector I've already probably already said uh, that we have main five end use sectors and we model supply transformation uh, um, in terms of uh, uh, regions. Uh, we overall have 28 regions. They are displayed in the chart. Uh, so some regions are um, um, they, they are represented by one single country, uh, like USA, Canada, Brazil, others are combination, and uh, uh, that's uh, basically probably the representation that we, that's the, the representation we are using in the global version. Uh, Examples of how the models have been used uh, to answer questions about policies, in the first instance, um, implementation of carbon tax or, em or carbon emission constraints and uh, also uh, uh, it can be used to model um, uh, situations or po policy um, policies that would uh, reduce uh, um, or limit the uptake of certain technologies with uh, changing growth rate constraints. So, for example, a situation where certain technologies will not be allowed or will not be available. Uh, and uh, uh, it can also be used to model uh, subsidies. Uh, so that would be applied to the capital cost of the technologies and uh, uh, reducing uh, the actual amount that would be spent uh, to uh, to invest in them. And uh, yes, overall, uh, that's uh, uh, broadly characterized the, the ranges of uh, uh, policy instruments. So on the one side, uh, uh, constraints on the missions, on the other side, uh, uh, certain uh, uh, taxations or uh, subsidies or uh, uh, constraints on the uptake of certain technologies or uh, on the other side um, the implementation of certain targets uh, so for example a minimum amount of uh, uh, for example hybrid cars in a certain year available in a region Um, these are um, examples of how the models have been used in the past uh, to address policy relevant questions. So, for example, in the steel decarbonization, uh, we have modeled the role of electrification for switching and CCS. Uh, in other cases, we have addressed more the um, size and the governance effect on the CCS uptake. So, for example, uh, how influential it would be for certain companies to have access to capital and uh, how that would impact essentially the uh, penetration of certain technologies. Uh, in other cases, the investor constraints uh, on the decarbonization. So uh, like the preferences of uh, investors would actually have an impact. So you may have uh, um, situations where uh, um, fewer switching may not be as immediate because of uh, because of the presence of uh, additional cost or perceived cost from the investors, and that will uh, basically not favor their decision uh, towards the, the fewer switching. 
Um, uh, finally, SDG relevant linkages uh, in general, uh, we can model uh, the implications of emissions on air quality if the model is linked with uh, um, in the downstream uh, downstream processing with models that can uh, model the actual uh, exposure. Um, and uh, um, the clean energy, affordable and clean energy SDGs. So, but that is typically one of the output that uh, you know, can be implemented, uh, uh, considering how the uh, low carbon uh, energy asset capacity can be, uh, you know, favored and uh, uh, in, in a region. In terms of uh, uh, modeling decent work and economic growth, that is uh, partly um, obtained. That is obtainable as an output, uh, uh, as a um, uh, downstream uh, uh, pro or post-processing of the output, uh, knowing the asset capacities. So that would inform job creation. And in terms of life on land, uh, uh, we uh, can also model uh, these policies in terms of afforestation uh, certain regions. And uh, this basically would conclude the presentation.